Hi, I'm Paul, the mechanical engineer here at SparkFun, and this is another episode of Engineering Roundtable. In this video, I wanted to talk about heat. Normally, heat can be a good thing. It can cook your food, it can keep you warm, and it can pop your popcorn. But in some cases, it can be bad. It can wreck your car, it can melt your ice cream, or in this case, it can damage your tools. When I use the mill and I'm cutting metal, there needs to be some type of coolant to cool the bit. Normally, I use cutting oil, but the disadvantage of that is it's smelly and it's also somewhat expensive. So that's when I got the idea to try to build a flood system. A flood system provides a non-stop stream of coolant to the mill. This keeps the bit cool and helps to wash away chips. One key feature of these systems is that you have to be able to recover the fluid after it washes down. Since this was going to be a little difficult to do on the mill, I decided that I'd give it a shot first on the bandsaw and see how it worked from there. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I designed and built the cooling system for our bandsaw, some of the flaws and some of the improvements I would make. So let's get to it. When I started this project, I really wasn't sure the direction it was going to head. So being the visual person that I am, I just started drawing in Creo. And here's what I came up with. Basically, the chute here catches the coolant as it comes off the saw and it flows down into this trough. This trough is deeper at one end to allow the heavier debris at one end to collect. As more coolant flows in here, it fills up the trough and it will eventually overflow at this point and run down into this drain, which will return it back to the main reservoir. First, I needed to cut the metal. I used our oxyacetylene torch. For this, you heat up the metal until it's red hot. Then, by pressing a lever, you blast it with oxygen to remove the metal. The torch leaves rough edges that need to be smoothed out. Some pieces I was able to smooth out with the bandsaw, but most I had to cut on the mill. Once I had all of my pieces cut out and smooth, I could start the welding. This type of welder is called a MIG welder. It feeds a thin wire out the end of the gun and uses electric current to melt the metals together. It is important to tack weld the metal first. A tack weld is a small weld placed every couple of inches to hold the metal in place. This prevents the extreme heat from curling the metal as you weld. It also makes it easy to take apart if you make a mistake. The electronics are very simple here, no microcontroller. I have a power supply hooked into the main switch on the bandsaw and a toggle switch hooked to the pump. A bright red light gives a clear indication of the status. When metal is cut on the saw, the shavings are washed into the coolant tray. Several magnets help to collect the ferrous materials. When the tray fills to the top, it overflows and washes down to a return hose, bringing it back into the coolant bucket. There are a few flaws in this design. I should have made the walls deeper to better contain the coolant. As the tray fills up, it gets very close to overflowing in places it shouldn't. Taller walls would have fixed this issue. Well, that's it for this episode of Engineering Roundtable. Even if you're not building your own cooling system, I hope you're able to use some of my principles such as the pump system in a project of your own. See you in two weeks.